And I'm going to just finish up with the adding of the tail feathers. Um, I did complete the adding of the wing feathers, but um, there'll be a, a final smoothing. Um, put the eyes in, there'll be a little adjustment to the face. Um, okay, so from my batch of pulled handles, I did about 14, I end up using I think like 12, and so I make a few extras. I want them to be long enough, and I want them the ones that are tapered. Um, so I'm going to get, let's see, I'm gonna get four put together here, and then I'm going to kind of just guesstimate where I'm gonna put them. And I'm going to blend them into the, the body. So, and this one's too long to just cut it right now. Okay. So like two on either side and I can decide if I wanna have a third one. Bigger one in the center. Okay. And then, okay. So I will have to cut a lot off of this to get it even to be on there. Okay. And then this does give a lot more length to the body. So I'm going to trim these a little more now, too. They're a little bit long still. And then I will sort of cut the end of the feather into a rounded shape. All right, so I will try to move quickly. Again, I move much more quickly when I'm not talking. <laughs> Think about what I'm gonna say. Okay, and if I decide I want to have three on either side, I'd put one like sort of coming from underneath that one. All right. Try to have hopeful images for right now. And the idea, I think this series of doves sort of to spread that message of hope and to be patient. This too shall pass, all this craziness. Um, I think also we have to look at these trying times as a chance to Think about how can you, what can you do to be a part of the solution? What can you do to be better? Um, sometimes for some people it is being loud and voicing that, expressing that anger. For me, I always like to think of a way to you know, find some comfort and something peaceful and enjoyable to spend my time with. Because I think if we can do that, it doesn't mean that all the times I have are peaceful and enjoyable, but the more times we can do that, um, the less strife there, there will be. And it doesn't necessarily take money, but um, having built up a kind of place of belonging I think that idea of belonging is important. Um, that's what most people want to create, a place where you belong. <clears throat> Some of the series of vegetable and fruit sculptures I did that were hand-built, the relationship um, between some of the individual forms, kind of that idea of creating a context. And I think if I have a group of these, that's something I would like to do uh, for a larger sculpture. Sometimes they're singles. Um, with the pair women, I think I did as many as four pairs on a pedestal, the 
plexi pedestal. And sometimes I did a lot of pairs. I mean, duos <laughs> of vegetables and things like that. With the birds, I've done a lot of pairs, you know, duos too, because a lot of times that the sandhill cranes was like the mating ritual. And some of those rituals kind of interesting, not only just the dance they create, which is really beautiful to watch, but um, how each species, we have our own rituals for finding our mate. Um, okay. So, um, on these, I will seal these together. Um, I think, I'm going to turn it around, that um, it's a hot spot for it to come apart. So I'm going to seal that with some good slip. And as I was talking, I was forgetting about that. That's one thing about talking. I'm thinking about something entirely different than what I'm doing. And I'm a very focused person, so I do like to not do two things at once. Giving a demo, kind of have to. Okay, and then I'll do the underside. Uh, all at once after I've done attaching. Okay. And I, I want to keep that integrity of the, again, that thumb groove and the initial kind of curve of the pulled handle. They're laid you know, at a sort of a slant. Okay. And the top part gets a little thick sometimes, so I kind of have to sort of improvise and sort of squeeze it in a little and pinch off so there's not quite so much fullness. Okay. Very important not to let these thinner ends get too dry. I do want them to be firm enough to hold some shape, but um, Okay, now rather than again, like have you spend the whole time watching me then smooth this, I think what I'm going to do is again, I will pause the video and carry on with my smoothing. And then I'll just show you the final um, bird and the painting of the legs. So I do, um, I like to put the um, legs on, and I do use uh, an underglaze uh, colored slip for that. And the beaks, I find it's easier in the glazing if some of that's already, you know, put in place. Okay. Okay, so the rough cut here. And then I'm going to, again, this will get sort of pushed in a little bit and then I'll cut some of these um, off so they're a little more flush to the tail and then I will do the roundness and make a you know a taper going that way um, and I have the ability I think to put a third one here and I might instead of using the bottom let's see if I use a little smaller piece here I haven't decided. I haven't decided. Um, okay, so that will be a little bit more finishing work, and then I will just show you the finished piece while I paint the legs up. All right.